Welcome back to PJ Chain Design Channel. We are going to learn how to use the most simple and effective way to build this uh, feather pendant. Are you ready? Let's get started. We're going to starting with a picture command or a picture frame in Rhino 5 and we're gonna bring in the image right there. Uh, make sure that that's the size you want uh, but first of all it's hard to see the grid behind so we want to come in into the material and right here you can change the uh, transparency so it will be easier for you to see the grid. And then in this case I want them to be about 30 roughly about 30 millimeter and I, I can rotate it later for the orientation but I'm just gonna um, lock it temporary and we don't have to trace everything because this is just a guideline but we do need a line from here for the the part we are going to set the stone we need to have some sort of a guideline over here so I'm going to trace something look like this and follow this line. The ideal is you need to know like what size of a stone that you're going to set and you definitely don't want to change it the uh, thickness too dramatically otherwise you will need to change the stone size. Okay and the rest of it we will just uh, use this as a guideline. It doesn't have to be followed exactly. Now if you feel like this is not what you like uh, size wise, uh, shape wise then you can turn on the control point and kind of edit it. Okay, so now that's doing the, each of the part. Ideally, what I like to do is to uh, sweep to rail on each of them and make sure each of them look nice. But this actually look really uniform. So what I like to do is I'm going to use the uh, conic corners on the rectangle. And then uh, that's create whatever shape that you think is well fit. Uh, and profile this is what actually I'm looking for something a little bit rounded there and I'm going to uh, uh, split with the point right at the quadrant so make sure our quadrant is on and then we can delete the part on the top. Okay so once we have that we are gonna coming over to the surface and we want to use the revolve command and the access will set it up here and we want to do 360 degree. Let's take a look on the perspective and this is what we got there. This this will be the element for each of the uh, feather uh, part there. Okay so let's start doing the first uh, first row. Keep in mind that the first row is higher than the second row and that's how you can get them um, look layering. So let's put it over here and kind of a turn around and something like this, right? You also want to take a look on the uh, perspective measure it's not like way too bumpy like what I have there. If you like that and um, or if you don't you can always use the scale tool um, to make sure that fit it, especially fitting into that area there. All right so that's the first one and then I'm going to do the second one simply just copy this to here, hit the all key and I need to make it smaller something like this. All right so what we're looking for is actually you want to make sure that this connection is not too ugly right it's not overpowering um, on the first one and just need to make sure that this one is not higher than the first one right so we want it to be lower and this is exactly what we're looking for and then we just need to continue copy this one rotate it and scale it down and if you feel like you need to stretch in any direction you could it doesn't have to be always that very symmetrical. You try to make a little bit more um, natural there. You just need to make sure it's gradually getting lower. So then we finish first row it look like this and I always like to keep um, on my front view I always like to keep original because you may stretch it may distort uh, the shape of things like that. Then the second one I wanted to do make another copy 
want to scale it down and actually uh, 1D scale make it a bit longer so that will fit that area a little bit better and then of course we need to move it down much lower so I'm going to move it down somewhere about here it need to be lower than the first set that we have over there okay so um then that will look really layering let's take a look on the perspective and look like it need to be a little bit lower okay so look nice that's moving up another one and this one we actually want it to be a little bit bigger or higher than the the, the bottom one and we might want to make it a little bit fatter and again making another copy rotate it a little bit you got something like this All right, so let's take a look on this. Uh, this is, uh, if that is what you want, then that's fine. If it is not, you can keep tweaking until that you find the shape that you like, okay? All right, so I'm going to hiding this picture right here. And so this is the result that we have. Look like the second one is a little bit too tall. So I'm just gonna move it down a little bit. And we also wanted to check on the render view and see if that is okay all right so now we have um this and I, I i'm going to stop tweaking here because it's gonna it sometimes take a long time to tweak into the way that you like it all right so the next things that i wanted to do is i need to do a profile and this profile is going to be another colony corner that I like to use. And we're gonna starting with the three points. So point one is here, point two is on the other rail. And then I wanna make them stand up about that tall, coming down like this, all right? And I actually need this to be a bit longer and move it down a little bit. So that way we have it intersect. Okay, so let's put in other uh, color to take a look on that section there. We're going to use the uh, sweep to rail, rail one, rail two, and let's take a look on this guy. And then you get something like this. All right, so let's do one more time. Rail one, rail two, and you click on this cross section and then you get something like this. All right, so take a look if this is what you like. I do find out it's a little bit bumpy there. I do not want it to bump like this and I actually need to have the button that's a little bit taller. So what we're gonna do is duplicate edges of this end and also this end right there. So now we're gonna delete this guy. We're gonna delete the surface we did and the surface over there we did. And we are going to use this new profile here and new profile over here. And let's make it a bit taller by uh, stretch them 1D. So then I can have them taller. I always create a surface first and find a curve, delete the surface and use that surface. So let's try one more time. Uh, we're gonna do sweep two, rail one, rail two, cross, cross and cross and make sure they all align correctly. Look, this one is not aligned, so it will twist. So make sure they align correctly. And then you hit enter, and then you wanna maintain the height. So <clears throat> that will look smoother. All right, I also wanna record a history just um, in case I change my mind. All right, so this one look like it's a little bit too tall over. All right, so look like we need to moving this down a little bit something like that you still have a little bit uh on the top but okay and then we can also use this one and we can kind of stretch up a little bit to make it taller so you will definitely have them intersect okay all right so now we have this done um we're going to uh do some bowling together so we are going to pick up all the red part and we want to bowling union Okay, so make sure that that is done. And we also want to close this. The two way you can close this, you can either use the cap, which will give you a flat surface, 
if that is what you want, that's okay. But I also like to use the patch tool and to patch this one. You do have a choice to pick up the curve and uh, surface edges. In this case, make sure you pick up the surface edges. Um, and you'll get something like this. Let's do one more time. On the other side, we're gonna use the patch surface edges and we get something like this. Okay, uh, if the end is looking okay for you, you can go ahead to join it. All right, make a, make sure they all close solid tool and then uh, you can do more adjustment if you want to rotate it, um, kind of whatever, you know, that look good to you. But what I'm going to do here is we want the back to be flat, right? So I want to create a box look like this. And then for this box, I want to make sure that I can see every single feather I'm going to do. So somewhere about here, take a look if it still look good to you. I think we have that one that's a little bit too big, but it's okay. Uh, I'm not going to tweak it anymore. So I'm going to have that one. We want to make a bowling difference. This one and this one will be different out by this one. So now we have a flat back. Okay. We also need to trim the things there. So one thing you can use is use a bowling split. So the red one will be split by this one. So now we have some extra inside of the shape that we can delete. All right, so this will be our feather. Let me go ahead to hide all the curve. And we're gonna hide it. Let's go ahead to, um, if you want it to be two tone, you probably don't want the bowling here, but since it's going to be one single tone, and then we can rotate it, um, the angle. Like this. All right, so this is our tutorial today for the stone setting part. I have a playlist for stone setting or I have a whole online class for uh, stone setting. You can check out the link below. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. See you next.